Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. It feels kind of weird saying that when you can actually see me. I'm trying something new, having like the face cam on. Let me know if you like it or if you dislike it. So today let's solve subarray product less than K. We're given an integer array nums and an integer K. We want to return the number of continuous subarrays such that the product of all the elements is strictly less than k. So a pretty simple problem today, at least in terms of the description. Now, first things first, focusing on this example here, how many subarrays are in an input array? About n squared. We have n subarrays starting at the beginning. We have n minus one subarray starting at the second element etc etc so roughly n subarrays starting at each element therefore we get n squared so that's a brute force solution for a medium problem usually brute force does not work so let's try to think about this can we do better in any possible way now when it comes to products let's think about what exactly a product is you'd basically take elements and multiply them and then usually the number is bigger as a result and we're only dealing with integers here so theoretically if all of these integers are positive then as we add more elements the product should always increase and so that's kind of something that you should be asking yourself like is it more simple than we realize are we dealing with negative numbers or not they don't mention it up here they don't say every element in the array is positive so in a real interview that'd be kind of a clarifying question now if you go down if you scroll at the bottom of the problem description you will see that it says all elements are going to be positive so how does that help us can we use that to our advantage and i want you to know that my line of thinking for how to arrive at the solution might be different than yours, but I'll just kind of quickly go through mine. The reason I even paid attention to whether elements are positive or not is because if it's guaranteed that these elements are always positive, then we can use a very simple and very fundamental algorithm that we've used a lot called the sliding window. And let me tell you why we can do that. It's a very common algorithm to take a brute force solution n squared and make it a linear time solution. And so the idea is this, these are our elements. So we wanna count all of the subarrays that satisfy the condition that start from this element. So that's very easy to do. Like that's along the lines of the brute force solution. Right now we have 10, that's our product. We add this, our product is now 50 and so both of the subarrays so far have met the condition. They have been strictly less than 100. Now we take two, multiply it by that, and that's gonna be 100. It's not strictly less than that. Okay, so if we were doing the brute force solution at this point, now what we would do is say, okay, well, adding positive elements is never gonna make our product any smaller. Like multiplying more positive elements, never gonna make that smaller. So now let's start here. Now let's start at five and then work our way and keep doing that. But my observation here is that this looks like repeated work. Why take five and now multiply it by two and then you know keep doing that when in reality, we could do something called two pointers. We could have, like at this point, this is what our window was. And now we know our product is too big. We want to make it smaller. How do we make it smaller? Well, we've already counted all of the subarrays that start from this element. So now let's do the same thing with the second element. And by doing that, what we're saying is shift this pointer over here. And so our product, which was 100, how do we do it? We're not going to uh, update the product by subtracting 10 from 100, we're going to divide 100 by 10. So basically reversing what we originally did. So that will leave us with 10, which should be the product of our current subarray, which it is. So that's just basic math here. So this is the idea behind this solution. And in some cases, it might not be that just shifting the pointer a single time will uh, lower the product to make it lower than that threshold. Uh, you can think of an example like this one. Suppose we had a two, two, 10, and then 10 here. I think this product would be roughly 400. And then we would have to basically take our pointer here, shift it by one, then our product would be 200. Then we'd have to shift the pointer one more time. Then our product uh, would be uh, 100. 
we'd still have to shift it actually we'd have to shift it three times in that case until our product is 10 because at that point it is less than 100. so instead of just having an if statement to shift this left pointer we're going to have a loop so that's a very important observation to make now lastly in terms of actually counting the subarrays it's not as straightforward as you would think because think about this let's quickly dry run through this let's say here this is one subarray so our result is one now our product is 50 this is a second subarray now our product is going to be 100 and this subarray did not count so now when we do take this uh, left pointer and shift it over here our subarray looks like this so the problem with this is that we kind of missed like when i originally said we have the pointer here we're going to count all subarrays starting from this element that was actually not correct it's misleading with the brute force that's what we would have done but with the sliding window that's not what we're going to do we're going to take a shortcut we're going to do this because if you notice we kind of miss the subarray that just included five. We counted this subarray, we counted this subarray, and now we were trying to count this one, but it's too big, so we shifted our pointer, and now we're at this subarray. So we missed this one, and it's a very easy thing to fix. Watch me do it. We start here, one subarray, great. We shift our right pointer over here. Now, this is not one subarray. This is valid, it's 50, the product is less than 100. Therefore, we actually found two subarrays. How do I know it's two? Because that's the length of this subarray. By introducing this five, we introduced two subarrays. Let me show them to you. Five itself, because if 10 times five is less than 100, of course, five itself is also going to be less than 100. We know that that's guaranteed. So by introducing 5, not only do we know 10 times 5 is less than 100, we know 5 is less than 100 as well. Now, theoretically, imagine our right pointer is here, and let's just suppose for a second that k was actually 200. Now, by introducing this 2, we introduced three new subarrays. Let me show them to you. 2 itself, 5 times 2, and 10 times 5 times 2. So that's the idea. So in a way, by taking this right pointer, the right pointer actually tells us how many subarrays, how many valid subarrays are ending at this element. So it's kind of the opposite of what I said originally. So once you know this, you've pretty much solved the problem. Every time we update our result, we're gonna add to the result the right pointer minus the left pointer plus one. That is the size of the window. It's a linear time solution and no extra memory needed. Let's code it up. So first things first, I like to declare the result and that is what I'm gonna be returning. And then we're gonna do our sliding window. So left is gonna be assigned to zero. That's our left pointer. We're gonna have a right pointer as well, but we're not gonna declare that out there because we're gonna just use that in a for loop. So it's going to iterate over the length of num. So right is gonna be incremented by one each time. Lastly, let's actually declare a product. Now, if we were not dealing with products, if we were dealing with integers usually we would set this to zero but with products if it's set to zero any number multiplied by zero is always going to stay zero so we want to set this to a neutral value and one when it comes to multiplication is a neutral value any number multiplied by one is going to be that number so now let's update our product um basically every time we see a new number so uh taking the number at the right pointer let's update our product and what we ultimately want to do is for every valid subarray, we want to update the result and add to it the size of that subarray, just like this, taking the size right there. But we can only do so if it's valid. So before we do that, let's make sure it's valid. Let's make sure the product is not greater than or equal to K. So while the product is greater than or equal to K, let's um, update it. So we will... Uh, update our left pointer increment it by one before we update our left pointer let's get the value at that left pointer nums at a left pointer and let's update our product so uh we can do that by taking the product and dividing it by that number you might think it's probably not possible for our left pointer to pass the right pointer but it 
actually is there are a few edge cases in this problem. What if k is zero? What if k is uh, equal to some of the numbers within nums? So we actually do need to check this. Let's make sure that left is less than or equal to right. If it passes the right pointer, then we will stop this loop. So this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, consider checking out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.